Thank you. Who here has ever procrastinated anything? I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I can convince myself that I've got a lot more time than I really do. And I only pay for that later when I get this sense of panic or frantic stress, and I realize I have, don't have as much time at all. This is exactly how I feel about the energy crisis which faces our planet today. You've all heard about the energy crisis, the fact that we generate much more energy than we can, sorry, we consume much more energy than we generate sustainably. We're getting to the generation part. And I feel like we're suffering from a collective procrastination because the way we generate energy damages our environment. And we're going to have to do something before it's too late. I read an interesting fact that in the previous ice age or last glacial maxima, 21,000 years ago, the difference in mean surface temperature was only 4 degrees Celsius. Over the past 100 years, there's been a dramatic spike in the carbon in our atmosphere when you compare it to the previous half a million years. You know, carbon in the atmosphere uh, contributes to the greenhouse gas effect, which causes a rise in temperature. And according to the International a Energy Agency, by 2017, we will have emitted enough carbon into our atmosphere to cause a rise of 2 degrees C, half that of the difference between now and the previous ice age. The reality of climate change for us is no longer a question. The question is, how will the impact of that climate change be felt over the next century? The question is, Will we continue to accelerate the rate of that climate change, making it less likely we'll be able to adapt as a species? The more energy that we generate and consume, the faster that we damage the environment. And our rate of energy consumption is accelerating at a frantic pace, driven by population and our love of technology. Just 10% of our energy in developed countries comes from renewable sources today, 20% if you include nuclear. These renewable sources like wind or hydro are great, but many studies have shown that we won't ever be able to generate 100% of our energy sustainably. We cannot control when the sun shines or when the wind blows, and therefore these energy technologies can't provide continuous power. Even if we could capture that and, and, and store it, we would never be able to keep up pace with the frantic demand. And even if we could do that, the magnitude of land and resources required to generate energy for our civilization would make those technologies themselves unsustainable. So there, there's a lot of data, and, and you guys can come to your own conclusions. But for me, this is an entirely unsustainable track that we're on today. And we're going to have to overcome our collective denial because our planet and our future is at stake. The climate change that's facing our, our planet has already been started. And to me, there's no credible way to, to come up with a solution that works for us. Or by the time we do, we won't recognize the planet around us. Today, on Earth, the plants grow tall towards the sun, towards its life-giving energy. Which makes sense, because most of the energy on Earth comes from the sun. So maybe it won't surprise you that I, that I suggest we need to look to the stars to generate sustainable energy for our future. So <clears throat> imagine with me that, that we reach, like a tree, towards the sun and as high as we can, and outside of our atmosphere into space. What if we gathered our gener generated energy directly in space, harness the energy of the sun directly, so we can gather the maximal force of the sun, which normally gets reflected by our atmosphere or our clouds, and we can gather that energy 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Once we harness this energy, we can beam it down to the ground the same way that, that the sun does today via electromagnetic waves. But if we, if we control it, we can channel that more efficiently, and we can direct it into our energy grid to power our homes and cities. This is a technology called space-based solar power, and it has the potential to power our civilization cleanly. So, Another question, who thinks that this sounds crazy? Or that <laughs> generating power in space and beaming it to the ground sounds dangerous? Or that it sounds impossible? I assure you that nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, you use this technology in your daily life today. When you watch TV, when you switch on your GPS, or you swipe your credit card, and it's an industry in which Luxembourg plays a leading role. There are thousands of satellites in orbit today which gather energy from the sun, convert it, 
and beam it down to the ground via waves. And these waves contain data that we use. And so ubiquitous and safe is satellite communication technology that the entire archive of YouTube, the equivalent of the entire archive of YouTube, is transmitted through our bodies every other second. To harness this technology to generate electricity, we need only to scale it up, and scale it up a lot. So imagine again that, that we launch much larger satellites in space, many satellites with a combined photovoltaic panel area equivalent to the size of Luxembourg. With those satellites, we could power the entire energy demand of the European Union. This is no small feat. But to do it, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just need a larger wheel. <laughs> it was first written about over 50 years ago. And since then, numerous international organizations, government agencies, and private companies have written about it, studied it, shown that it works, and have plans to make it happen. Yet we still subsidize fossil fuel energy more than renewable sources. Let's think about it from a, a slightly different perspective for a second. 99.9% .9 of the energy on Earth comes from the sun. The sun heats the Earth, which in turn causes the wind and the rain. And our renewable sources, with the exception of photovoltaics, generate energy from these secondary sources of, of energy, from the sun's radiation. Fossil fuels are like tertiary sources, because before being concentrated over 650 million years, they were once plants and animals, which got their, sun, their energy from the sun, too. The further away we get, from the direct energy of the sun, the more damage that it causes our environment to extract that for our own purposes. Doesn't it make more sense? Wouldn't it be easier to get that energy directly? Space-based solar power would enable us to tap the source, the ultimate source of energy for our planet. Just like going to a fresh river to get your water rather than drinking from a well. And it may be the only way to do so sustainably. So, What's it going to take? And what's holding us back today? Space is a, is a challenging and complex environment to work in. And to get there, we're literally burdened by the physics of overcoming Earth's gravity. To accomplish our objectives, we're going to have to build things in space 10 times larger than we've ever done before. And first, we have to get there. But once we're there, we're going to need entirely new methods for constructing these satellites, using robotics, satellites which actually maybe build themselves, and these satellites are going to be built up of relatively few components, but these components have to be optimized on the ground first. Most importantly, though, to do this, we need to enable the economies of scale. There are only 20 or so commercial heavy launches per year, but to build just one satellite, we might need 100. So that the space industry itself is going to have to be increased 100-fold in order to support such an endeavor. The first power plant in space might cost $20 billion. But as I don't have $20 billion in my pocket, what, what does that actually mean? That's only three times as expensive as an equivalently sized nuclear power plant. And we build many of those today. The International Space Station costs $20 billion, and the missions to the moon cost $140. So I think that $20 billion is pretty reasonable for what it gets us, and especially for what it could mean for our future. And at least we know that we could do it if we had the right motivation. In the future, we're also going to have to overcome fear. I would argue that nuclear energy is no more sustainable than fossil fuels, but for a different reason. But it's the fear of this technology which drives us to phase it out now when we need more carbon-free sources of energy, not less. Hollywood has already shown us fear, villains with giant space lasers that hold the Earth hostage. <clears throat> but physics and engineering prove that beaming energy can be safe. And even if I told you that standing in the middle of a beam, it would feel like nothing more than a warm summer's day, would people really believe that? Or would the fear hold us back? If we look at our history, it looks, turns out that these challenges are not new for us. Aviation was once considered impossible, too costly, and the pursuit of fools. Yet just one century later, we've mastered transportation. We've mastered the skies. We can cross the Earth faster than the speed of sound, and we connect our cities 100,000 times per day. Through collective action rather than procrastination, we, we leveraged the economics and we mastered our fear. And just look how the world has evolved as a result. The bottom line for us, though, is that there is no easy way to generate energy sustainably for our civilization. But we have to face the fact that the track that we're on 
is unsustainable. It can't go on. Space-based solar power is a technology which can revolutionize the way we generate energy, unlike any other which is being pursued today. Being in space means we can tap a, a near limitless supply of energy for our civilization and do that in a way that doesn't harm our environment. And we can beam that energy down to the ground when we need it, where we need it, enabling a safe and global energy grid. This is an enormous challenge, but it's, it's just within our reach. And if the price of conquering these hurdles is the price of clean energy, then I think it's the price that we should pay gladly. Maybe then we'd be more cognizant of what, co what energy costs our future. I think to make it happen, we need to make a declaration, similar to the one made by U.S. President John F. Kennedy in 1961 when, when he chose to go to the moon, not because it was easy, but because it challenged our industry to new heights. And because in our case, we need a solution to the energy crisis today. We need the fortitude to, to realize that we're going to have to change the way we think, and the problem is not going to be solved through conventional means. We need the leadership to accept that challenge, and we need the conviction to see it through. And what we really need now is courage, to reach to the stars to power our future, to tap the source of energy directly, and to create a legacy that we can be proud of.